stops and starts. And I love just flowing in the Holy Ghost. And as a pastor, you know, it's these moments have to be very well stewarded or we'll miss the move. And I don't want to miss God's move for you because I believe there's a message here for you today. that's going to transform it's going to get you thinking about some things and my declaration over you and my prayer over you has been Lord that this season we would not miss our assignment or our appointment the other night it was at the fireside chat men's fireside chat Men, if you don't go to Fireside Chat, I don't know what to say to you. But we eat good, and we have fellowship well. But Lord has the Lord has a special, specific word, and I want to encourage you men to get to those Fireside Chats. But uh, the Lord said, as I was preparing for that night, tell the men not to miss their appointment. can make every appointment be on time for every appointment but miss the real appointment don't miss your appointment your time with Jesus your time with the Lord this season has a a tendency to want to push you into a spirit of hustle and a spirit of hurry busy and I want to caution you toward that to not allow hustle, hurry and busy be the order of your life don't miss your appointment Turn to your neighbor and say, don't miss your appointment. Today's message is titled, Freedom from Fear. know this whole year we've been in a season of transition as a church gurus say you never should take a church into more than two changes a year we had one major change this year on top of a global pandemic where lives were changed, families were changed, families were altered, sons no longer had fathers, mothers no longer had husbands or sons or daughters. There's a whole lot of change going on. And in, this, and in these seasons of change, our government, the world stage, there's a whole lot of stuff going on. And some of us would like to say we have a grasp on everything. And I, I don't know about you, I've had to unplug from some things. Unplug from... CNN, constant negative news. I had to unplug from some media sources and and some radio sources and and, and all these things that I've allowed to have my, my ear and my eye. No longer does it have my ear and eye. 
there's only one thing right now that gets my ear and eye. Not right now, but from here on, and it's this. It's where I filter everything from. If you have a, an opinion and it's based on what they're feeding you, the mass media, I want to encourage you to turn that off. I want to encourage you to spend more time in your word. Because if you don't, you will miss your appointment. If you don't unplug, you're going to miss your assignment. And I don't want you to miss that. There are moments right now in this season and in our life that God wants to insert into your family, insert into you individually, rest, peace, blessing. He doesn't want you to miss the tender moments with your grandchildren, your children, your friends. He doesn't want you to miss the God-given downloads that he wants to impart into your life. Sitting outside last night by my by the fireplace, I'm, the the leaves are just falling off my tree. It's amazing. It was like I looked down, and I'm covered in leaves. I'm like, I, I knew there were some leaves, but my goodness, seasons are changing. But seasons and change are natural and they're needed. And it's important that in these seasons we don't miss our appointments. Father, right now as I get into the word and get into what you've put into my heart to share with these partners and friends sons and daughters of your kingdom Lord I pray that our ears are open and our hearts are receptive to receive the word and we all said amen amen I want to take you over to 1 Kings chapter 19 As you're turning to 1 Kings chapter 19, I want to remind you of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. And this is what it says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 and 19 do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. How many of you know that God always has a plan for you in your movement? When you're in transition, when you're, when you're doing what God's called you to do, God will always have an appointed time for you. Don't miss your appointment. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't miss your appointment. 1 Kings 19. I'm going to read this. and I encourage you to read chapter 18 as well. It's a conversation between... Elijah and Obadiah concerning King Ahab. But today I want to focus on chapter 19. And I want to focus on Elijah at the end of his life, at the end of his term. How you finish matters. You know, I, I've 
I've been in this long enough to know it's not how you start, it's how you finish. We're entering into a new season, 2022, going into 2023. And I want to remind you to finish well. I want to remind you not to give up on the promises that God has given you. And I want to take it from a season where we're going to look at Elijah's life. I want to move it from that season. And I want you to start implementing yourself and putting yourself in the story. Of that which we are about to read. And I'll start in verse 1, 1 Kings 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw it, he arose and ran for his life. He arose and he ran for his life. And went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a broom tree, and he prayed that he might die. This is Elijah, the greatest prophet. Raised the boy from the dead. Called down fire from heaven. And now he's in a place where he's running for his life. But he himself went a day's journey and into the wilderness he came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, it, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life for I am no better than my father's. Then as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for you. So he arose and ate and drank and he went in the strength of, the, of that food 40 days and 40 nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? So he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fires, a still small voice. So it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? I want you to underline that. I want you to highlight that. What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord, God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and, and they seek to take my life. And the Lord said to him, 
Go return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazel as king of Assyria. Also you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of the Shaphat of Abel, of Mahaloah, you shall anoint as prophet in your place. Verse 16, and I stop. Very interesting altercation, conversation between God's anointed prophet, Elijah, and God. For over three years, God had protected and provided for Elijah during the drought. God used Elijah to perform amazing miracles, including raising a boy up from the dead, sending fire to the altar. Yet when Jezebel threatens his life, threatens to kill Elijah, Elijah has a very surprising reaction. Elijah was afraid. So he ran for his life. Elijah doubted that God would protect him this time. Elijah was focused on the evil Jezebel instead of the all-powerful God. This is like looking at a beautiful rose bush, but instead of seeing the rose, all you see is the thorns. Elijah has gone against the prophets of Baal. King Ahab tells Jezebel about what Elijah did. She sends a messenger letting him know that he would be dead by this time tomorrow. Verse 3, Elijah ran as far as his legs could carry him. He traveled over 100 miles away from Jezebel. He fled out of fear. Not because God had instructed him to run, but fear will cause you to do some crazy things. I have some thoughts on fear today. Fear will cause you to miss the timing of God. Fear will take you opposite of where God has directed. If God's called you here, fear will take you there. Fear will wear you out. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, fear will wear you out. Fear will make you question everything. Fear will cause you to forget all the great victories and challenges where you have came out a winner, but all you can see now is losing. Fear will cause you to forget God's faithfulness. Fear will paralyze you. You don't think right. You don't move. You become hypersensitive to everything. Fear will always cause you to think the worst. And we know what God told us. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. See, fear is one of the emotions experienced by everyone around the world. There's not a person in this place that has experienced fear one time or another. Fear arises with the threat of harm, 
either physically, emotionally, or psychologically. It's real or imagined. I'll never forget when my mom and moved to government housing, and, and here I am in, in this room, and, and I'm scared as scared can be, and I'm, I'm laying in this room, and I'm laying against the window, and all I see is shadows, and I'm about 11, 10, and I am scared, only to find out it was a tree. Fear will cause you to think things. Fear will cause you to always see what's the worst. Real or imagined? While traditionally considered a negative emotion. Fear is considered a negative emotion. Persistent fear can sometimes be referred to as anxiety. If we feel constantly worried without knowing why, God hasn't given you a spirit of fear. And I want to address it in this season. And I want to address fear right now. Because let me tell you, it has no place in the body of Christ. I asked my wife if I could share this. And she said, yes, you may. Tanya's family, and mainly her grandpa Hawkins, always said, something bad always happens around Christmas. Well, their baby, baby Charles, passed away on Christmas. Tanya's mother had a car accident six days before Christmas. The sister's son and girlfriend died a few days before Christmas. Many people will make decisions based on fear. And fear for many sets the life order of the day. Fear for many, in many, will set the life order of the day. And the quote came from Tanya's family. And this is what the quote said. We will not travel the week of Christmas. How many people have made decisions in life based on a spirit of fear? Whether it be reality or imagined. When I married Tanya Jane, Christmas for a couple of years there got real tense. And I was like, what is going on? And she told me about all this. And I said, not in our house. Not in our family. Not my children. We're not going to tolerate fear. I ask you today, have you tolerated fear? We're going to address it today. Many people make decisions based on fear. It's amazing to me how people naturally navigate to fear and embrace it. As pastor, I see Instead of talking the answer, many times we'll talk the fear-based problem. We'll talk the negativity. We'll go there before we'll go to the Word. And this is my prayer. 
When fear comes, challenge it. When fear begins to rise up, challenge it. Run to the source of the fear. Don't run from the fear. If you don't challenge fear, fear will get a foothold in your life. W. Clement Stone made this statement. Thinking will not overcome fear, but action will. Here's a reminder, church. Emotions do not follow reality. Emotions follow perception. Perception is not always reality. Emotions have to be subordinated to the reality of God's word. Elijah had forgotten because of fear that Judah was only 40 miles away. Protection was just 40 miles away. Safety was 40 miles away. But fear will take you places that you never were intended to go. Elijah should have realized that no problem was too big for his God. Not even Queen Jezebel. When Elijah ran away from Jezebel, he certainly did not run away from the Lord. Elijah wandered deep into the desert, sad and discouraged. Elijah told God that he had had enough. He sat beneath the tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel uh, touched Elijah and let him know that there was food for him. God had sent an angel to prepare a meal for him. The angel awoke Elijah and gave him bread and water. The angel took care of Elijah and it would seem he told Elijah where to go next. And even though Elijah wasn't where he should have been, God took care of him and urged him to keep moving forward. God is with you when you fail. God is in your new beginnings. God is in your new beginnings. Thank God for new beginnings. Thank God he never quits on us. Thank God he doesn't leave us in our, in our weakness and our, in our abandonment of, 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 of all these emotions. He doesn't run away, but he draws near to. A broken and contrite spirit, he will not deny And here Elijah is questioning God, questioning his motives, questioning why, why, why. And God says, I still love you so much that I'm going to feed you. Suppose I were to rise with the sun in the east and then cross over to the west when it sinks into the ocean. Your hand would always be there to guide me. Your right hand would still be holding me close. That's what David said in Psalm 139. Your hand would always be there to guide me. Your right hand would still be holding me close. See, Elijah walked 40 days and 40 nights until he came to Mount Horeb. This was the same place where God had appeared to Moses in the burning bush. And it's so amazing to me that Elijah had to take the same journey, 40 days and 40 nights, just just so symbolic. Don't you think God was trying to show Elijah, hey, I did it for the children of Israel. 40 days. 40 years. Don't you think I can do it again? Don't you think I can deliver you again? Don't you think I can bring bring restoration to you and handle this, this lady that's after your head? Remember that 
scripture I told you to underline in verse 9 and 10. Here the Lord asked, Elijah, what are you doing here? Which tells me, in life, you're going to have a lot of great moments. A lot of great miracles. A lot of wins. A lot of victories. That still be out of place. I don't want that to be said of us. This was God's way of making Elijah think about what he had run away from. Gently, God was giving Elijah the opportunity to confess his mistrust and turn from his sin. But Elijah did not repent. Instead, Elijah gave excuses. Eleven and twelve, the Lord said, Go out, stand on the mountain in front of me. I'm going to pass by. As the Lord approached, a very powerful wind tore the mountains apart. It broke up the rocks, but the Lord wasn't in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. And after the earthquake of fire, and the Lord wasn't in the fire, God displayed all these mighty acts in front of Elijah. To give Elijah the opportunity to set his focus back on him. It was as if God was saying, if I can split a mountain and cause an earthquake. Do you really need to worry about that woman that's trying to come after you? Then God's gentle voice whispered again to Elijah, what are you doing here? Those of you that are here today and you're gripped by the spirit of fear, I want to ask you a question. What are you doing here? I'm going to tell you like I tell my grandkids and I'm going to tell you like I told my my children as they were growing up. Fear? Get behind me. No fear here. Have you ever been in a place and wondered how you got there? Possibly fear took you there. I want to remind you again, emotions do not follow reality. Emotions follow perception. Perception is not always reality. Emotions have to be subordinated to the reality of God's word. Sadly, Elijah did not. He didn't set his focus back on God. He repeated the excuses. He did not turn. His heart had become hard and very much like Jezebel. He was unrepentant. Without a humble and repentant heart, Elijah's time of being used by God came to an end. Just a few weeks before, God was using Elijah in a mighty way. But now Elijah's heart was hard and unchanging. We must abide with the Lord, remaining with him daily so our hearts do not grow hard. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, God is patient and gentle, wanting every person to turn from their sin and follow him. He's also just and cannot use people who will not turn from their sin. When God speaks to you about your sin, turn from it right away. He may speak to you through his word, through his Holy Spirit, or through other believers in your life. Embrace the move. Embrace the change. 
At many times, many of us are guilty of what Elijah did. Even though God has taken away our sin, he's given us new life and continues to pour out blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon us. When something goes wrong, many times it's the one thing that we all see. We see the imperfection instead of all of God's blessings. We see the, the one negative thing, but forget about the hundreds of thousands of things that God showed himself faithful. You remember in Job, Job's talking with his buddies. I mean, <clears throat> it's a great revelation into why, what possibly what happened to Job was because of this. In Job chapter 3 verse 25, this is what Job says amongst his buddies. You ready? For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. Could it be what Job feared most is what embraced his life? Could it be that the perpetual cycle of destruction, the perpetual cycle of, of division and the perpetual cycle of staying in drought is because you fear it. And the last time I remember that you and I, we were called as believers to do is put fear under our feet. If we do not address fear, the thing we are trying to come against will be the thing we embrace. Fear has to leave. Fear has to bow. Fear has to be broken off your life. Ladies and gentlemen, around our house, during Christmas time, we crank the music a little louder. We drink more eggnog. Amen. We get the Christmas lights bright and shining because we refuse to allow what has been spoken over Tanya's family and my family to come to reality. When fear shouts, I do the opposite. You want to change that perpetual cycle? Go after it. Well, my mom had this, my, my granny had this, and my great-granny had that. And it's going to be passed down to me. How about getting that word out of your mouth? Well, this, this person in my lineage has heart disease. My grandpa had heart disease. My great-grandpa great had heart disease. And my dad had heart disease. Well, you know, I'm the next in line. Is that truly how a believer thinks? Is that truly how a believer acts and responds and speaks? I thought we were different. I thought you were transformed. 
I thought you were renewed. I thought the old man died and the new man came to life. I thought we were no longer a slave to fear. Somewhere we've got to make an exchange and say enough is enough. No more fear. No more doubt. No more negativity will I allow to be in my life any longer. <clears throat> Some would say, well, this isn't a Christmas message. It's very much a Christmas message. Let's kick you, get the band up here. Let's do it. We're going to address it. Pastor Matt, I need you. I need prayer warriors. Those of you that have slain the spirit of fear in your life, I want you to come stand right here. There's no fear in your life. I want you to stand right here. That doesn't mean you don't have challenges. But you say, no, no fear. I want you to stand right here. I need about, uh, yeah, there you go, right there. Right there. Now turn around, turn around. God's going to use you. Come on. Brother Brockwalter, come up here. No fear. Someone say no fear. Now, if you have fear in your life, and this message is like piercing you, and you're like, man, this is what I, I believe is about to take place. As an act of faith, you're going to get up out of your chair, and you're going to come down here, and these people are going to begin to pray for you. These people... Turn around and look at me. You need prayer. You need prayer. Okay, you wasn't listening. That's okay. I wasn't clear. That's okay. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. okay, here, listen to me. I need you in faith. If fear is not in your life, you can't give what you don't have. There's people out here that have been struggling with the spirit of fear. And God's going to use you to set the captive free. The anointing breaks every yoke of bondage. Not emotionalism. The anointing. And I believe as you lay your hands, fear is going to crumble off these people's lives. Turn around. Okay. I want you to sit down for just a second. James, sit down. Are you here to pray or get prayed for? I need to know right now. Okay, turn around. If you are here today, You've got, maybe, have the door cracked to fear. It's not wide open, but uh, it keeps coming. And I don't know how to address it. I don't know how to win against this. The Lord says he's here to destroy the foothold of fear. There's no judgment here because we've all had to deal with the spirit of fear at one time or another. And today is the day of salvation. Today is the day where you are set free. Today is the day where there's no more bondage. Let's all stand to our feet. We are about to sing. But if fear has been in your life, I need you to walk down. I don't want you to lay hands on them yet. We're going to do it by faith. 
And we are going to see God do what he does well. And that's destroy the works of darkness. Destroy the spirit of fear. If you've walked up here because you want that removed from your life, stand in front of one of these people that are up here. Don't touch them yet. Those of you that are about to pray, pray in the Holy Ghost now. I don't mean to be forceful like that, but there's a there's an anointing that's coming on you. Okay, I want her. Don't touch her, please. Stand in front of Mr. Bolkhoffman right here. We're going to release faith. If you're standing up here and you don't have anybody to stand in front of, that's okay. Come right here to the middle so I know that's you. Father, right now, we declare, we decree that fear is demolished. Fear is under our feet. The spirit of fear is broken. And I declare and I decree that as they walked up here, this, this act of faith, Lord, I thank you, Lord, they have recognized it. And because they've recognized it, I believe you've given us the power to destroy it. Satan, I remind you to get your hands off God's children. They are the, uh, oh, they are the delivered. They are the healed. They are the set free. And I bind the spirit of fear now in the name of Jesus. And we release faith now. We release the anointing. Go, lay your hands on them now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. will make a way so I am not afraid. When I walk through the waters, I'll be overcome. When I go through the river, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way so I am not afraid. When I am in the fire, I will not feel the flame. Yes. I'll stand before the giant, declaring victory. Victory is ours. My God. So I am not Fear afraid. Is come on now, come on, drive it, drive it. Oh, I'm not afraid. When I walk through the fire, I will be overcome. When I walk through the rivers, I will not be drowned. My God will make a way, so I am not afraid.
you understand what we were doing there? Did you understand? Did you understand? Did y'all understand? This is how we're going to do it. It's releasing that spirit of faith corporately because there's a corporate anointing and we're tapping into that. This will be different than what we do at home or out there. What we do here is we're releasing corporately. All right. Thank you so much for being used by God. If you're here today, every head bowed, every eye closed. I feel in my heart there's some that need to rededicate their hearts to the Lord today. I just, I just sensed it as I was singing that song. There's a rededication you need to make. I don't believe there's anyone here that doesn't know Jesus. Because I believe you know him. But you can know him and still not make heaven. You can know about the things of God and, and split hell wide open. Somewhere you've got to make a, a, a transition in your heart. That I'm going to do it God's way. Because God's way matters. God's way's better. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we just thank you today that your way matters. Within the sound of my voice, I pray, Father, that you're dealing with that person right now. I just sense in my heart you've got nervousness about you. You've even said in your mind, there is no way I'm raising my hand. And the Lord is saying to you right now, you are my beloved son. And I love you. I want you to know that I care for you, says the Lord. I want you to know that you're the apple of my eye. If you were the only one on this planet, I would have still sent Jesus to die on the cross for you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in this place, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Would you just raise your hand and let me know, Pastor, that's me. Anybody? Anybody? Okay. Father, we just thank you right now that you're working on the hearts and lives of our friends pray that they have an encounter with you and Lord if they didn't make that step today I Lord I pray that you just just keep keep them in the the hunger and the desire burning on their on their in their in their soul and their spirit and I pray Lord that they have an encounter with you in Jesus mighty name and we all say Amen. Come on, give the Lord praise in this house. Hallelujah.